Welcome to Lesson 20. Today I want to talk about working with end grain. So if you've been doing some turning and just fairly new to it, you may have been doing mostly what we call spindle work, side grain, where we've been cutting across the wood fibers this way. Or you may have done some bowls, in which case we're still cutting across the wood fibers. And what I mean by that is as I cut here, the fibers below support the cut. And we're cutting the sides, and that's why we get these nice long curls and no sawdust. But I want to introduce you to something that may be new to you, or if you've been turning for a while, it may just be reviewed. But when we do a hollow vessel, whether it's a goblet like this, and I spindle work. But this is end grain work cutting into the end of the fiber. The other thing, boxes, same idea. I have end grain cutting to do in the base and into the lid. Side grain here, going straight in here. And then, of course, again, we advance to maybe hollow vessels, in which case not only am I working into the end grain, but I'm cutting in such a way that we call it blind turning. I can't see where my finger is or where the cutter is when I'm doing this work. So there's some other techniques that get involved when we're doing hollow vessels. But I'm more interested in just talking about grain alignment today. Just a short one about that. So if this is a vessel I'm going to work on, I've got to try to cut downhill to the grain this direction. And if I'm starting you know, using a shallow fluted gouge, I can do some of it, but you can see that I'm limited in how far I can go because my handle is going to interfere. I'd love to be able to cut on the bevel here. Oh yeah, that's not doable at all. So I've got to find new ways to cut. This works okay for a little bit, for things that are really shallow, but we need other kinds of tools. And for me to cut like this, I need to have access from the center. So when we start a project like this, we step in front of it for a second, we need to create a hole in the middle so I can make these cuts this direction and over here this direction, but I got to do it from the center. So one of the easiest ways to do that is to grab myself a great big drill bit, that's a pretty big one, come in here and drill a hole, not quite to the bottom, well, let's say 80-90% of the way to the, to the total bottom. That gives me access to be able to get my tool in here and begin to start making these cuts. Still, downhill to the grain if I can. Well, I showed you the spindle gouge works for part of it, but not for all of it. So I want to show you some of the other tools, and believe it or not, most of the cutters for working in grain are scrapers, various different types of scrapers. There's a few exceptions, very few. Let me show you one of those exceptions. It's called a hook tool. You can see a closer up video, a picture of this at the very end. This actually has a bevel to it. And I can come in here, back on the other side again. I can rub the bevel on this tool And come all the way down. Well, if it's a little longer, my example here is a little bit oversized, but I can literally rub the bevel coming up and down. This tool has a bevel. It's a tool that's not used very frequently, but uh, those of us who have them and use them find them really convenient to use. There's more than one versions. This one I picked up from uh, Michael Hoselock in Canada, made my own shaft for it. Here's a commercial one, and this is pivotable, so I can pivot to go in different portions in this oversized vessel I drew here. So that's about the only way I can think of to rub the bevel down inside something like that. Alternatives are various kinds of scrapers, and believe me, there are hundreds of them, and if you get into hollow vessels, especially ones that have 
a fairly severe curve like this one does, I've got to find ways to get back up under the shoulder and still cut downhill to the grain. Now, outside's easy. That's just like a spindle project. But inside's where the difficulty comes. So let me show you some of the options. I'm going to step over to the table where I've laid out lots of different examples of things we could use and show you how we find tools that might fit inside of these different curves. So I'm going to step over behind me and show you some tools. In one of our classes, we do little goblets like this. It's a combination of spindle work, beads and coves, and end grain hollowing. It's our first introduction to working with end grain. It's shallow and it's wide open, and it gives us the opportunity to work with a number of different kind of tools. So to drill this hole in this one, or here's a simpler version of the same thing, we can very easily put our billet in the chuck and come in here and drill with the shallow fluted gouge. Keeping it rotated at about a 45 degree angle, pressing, pulling out, pressing, pulling out. And the reason we have to do that is as this edge cuts, the bevel runs into uncut wood and it doesn't take a very deep cut. So it's a lot of short in and outs. But I hollowed this whole piece out easily with my shallow fluted gouge. Some of the students chose not to do that, but to go in there with a drill bit and create a basic hole, which is okay. That works. And then, then to clean out the interior, because this is wide open, I can actually cut from the center around here with the shallow fluted gouge for most of the hollowing, 70, 80% either one, because I can keep the bevel against the wood and cut on the pull. But when I get right down to the bottom, the difficulty is the tool is touching at the tip of the cutting edge and the bevel isn't touching the wood at all. So I have what's called an unsupported cut. The edge is cutting and I'm hanging on out here for dear life and I'm not going to get a very clean cut across that end grain. So, we change off to a round nose scraper, which then can be taken into the vessel from the bottom and drawn out, cutting cleanly across those fibers at the bottom, rounding out this area down here easily. I have a number, and if you look at these in my collection, they're all basically the same. The difference is, is the shape of the curve at the end. And that allows me the option of being able to find a, cut, a cutting surface that matches the curvature that I'm trying to get. I actually may own more scrapers than I do gouges, and that's simply because I have a lot more different curvatures to fit different projects I might be working on. Well, this is where we start, something nice and open. But then the next thing we probably may move to would be something like a box. Again, end grain cuts not quite as open, and it can easily, again, be finished off with our scraper, cutting from the center outward, downhill to the grain, lid, or the body. The problem becomes more complex when I get into what I call a as a hollow vessel. As the opening gets smaller, and I have deeper cuts to make, I've got two things to deal with. How do I cut back up underneath a shoulder like this? And number two, how do I manage a cutter that I can't see? Well, I'm not going to go into that. That's what's in a class for uh, hollow vessels. But how do I get under that shoulder? I then start using tools that have some bend or shape to them. For instance, tools like this set. This is a miniature version of David Ellsworth's uh, hollowing tools. Here's a round nose cutter, very small. It's not going to take out many chips at a time, so I don't have to fight the tool very much. Straight. Take 80% of the wood out with this. But to get back underneath the shoulder, I need one that will allow me to cut back up into this shoulder area here. These cutters work nicely, but the point of it is, as the wood hits this tip, it's going to want to torque or rotate the tool slightly. So I have to be careful to hold it solidly. 
at center line with the cutter horizontal or even a little bit below horizontal. Never above horizontal. That's a catch <laughs> waiting to happen. So that's one way to get back up underneath. Here's a set of cutters. This set comes in several different configurations and sizes. The straight for cleaning out most of the mass. A slight bent tool. In this case, that one would get underneath the shoulder. But for something with a more severe curve like this piece, I need one that has an even greater bend to it. And this works back up under here. These bent tools have one characteristic that's really important. The cutter is in line with the shaft. That means as this cuts, I don't get this torquing. If I laid it on the tool rest at this point right here, it's going to want to roll every time, so I have to hold it farther back. So cutters that are in line with the shaft will not tend to torque over very much, and that's, that's a good thing. This is one brand. Here's another brand. Same configuration, but it's using, again, a much smaller cutting surface. One that can be removed, this is uh, set into here with some CA glue. Warming this tip will allow this cutter to be removed and another one to replace it. So it's replaceable. And this is one that I have in a, a commercial handle. And it comes in different curvatures. I mentioned hook tools. Here's a hook tool with an adjustment screw, which allows me to rotate that at different angles so I can get back up underneath the shoulder with a tool like this. This set of tools is really nice, but it doesn't come in a curved version, only straight. What I like about this is the back of it is V-shaped. So I lay it on the tool rest and just rest it there. You can see that the cutter is already at a 45 degree angle, so it's going to shear across those fibers, cutting them. That's a carbide cutter, and it can be loosened and rotated so the fresh cutting edge can be presented. And there's different sizes of this tool. But unfortunately, it doesn't allow me to get back underneath these curves very easily. One other thing that happens is as we cut, and I go deeper and deeper into a vessel, I reach a place where the tool's hanging over the tool rest so far that the tool itself will begin to vibrate. There's two kinds of vibrations that you can hear. A deep, hollowing, thumping kind of vibration, which is generally the wood flexing under the cut. A high-pitched, screeching type of vibration, which is generally the tool itself vibrating like a banjo string. So, I get vibration. That doesn't make the cut very smooth, and I want to eliminate that. And there's several things I can do. I can increase or decrease the lathe speed, trying to get away from that harmonic spot. I can sharpen the tool, increasing the ability to cut. I can increase or decrease lathe speed or pressure in the cut, trying, to, again, to get off that harmonic. But as the tool goes deeper and deeper into a vessel, like this, get down to the bottom of this guy, I have to be hanging over that far. If that tool starts vibrating, one of the things we do is go to larger and larger diameter tools. So those of us who do big hollow forms have bigger, heavier duty boring bars to dampen the tool vibration. Such as this guy. That's a boring bar. That's about 15 pounds of steel. But when it hangs over the tool rest this far, with a cutter sticking out the end of the thing, very little vibration and it cuts beautifully on deep hollow forms. One of the other things I've done to minimize difficulty is to make very large handles. This one's oval. So when I grip this and I hold it right where I normally hold it, I know this cutter is horizontal. And then if it wants to torque over a little bit, I've got a good place to grip and that works out pretty nicely. 
So, for those of you who are just getting into either doing boxes or hollow vessels, starting to cut end grain, a good class will get you going right, but I wanted to give you a head up on the difference between cutting across the grain and cutting into the grain, end grain cutting. So it always represents more difficulty, new tools, new techniques, but it has some advantages. One of the advantages is I can do certain kinds of decorative work, which is called chatter work. And in our next lesson, I'll show you how to do that. See you next time. Thank you.